Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Police International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you and cherish you. We thank you, Father. We set this time before you. Father, we love you and uh, thank you, Father, for your direction. Thank you, Father, for following your footsteps. Every footstep has its own anointing and its own place and time for us to go and place a foot in your footsteps. And we thank you, Father. We praise you for all that you do for our lives. In your holy name, amen. Okay, today's sermon is called God, Holy Protector. God, Holy Protector. Amen. God is our Holy Protector. And we need to see from God's word so we're very convinced, not just knowing but actually seeing the facts that he really is our holy protector and just as he protected our other brothers and sisters in the past and present of other situations we heard he's going to do it now he's going to do it right now for you and me amen god the holy protector let's go to first samuel all of samuel chapter 2 verse 1b through 2 1b through 2 of second chapter first samuel amen are we there all right i hope so because i'm going to read now here we go my heart exalts in yahweh my delight has been restored by yahweh i can gloat over my enemies because of the joy at your saving me amen god saving us yahweh saves it's there yahweh and then saves Yeshua. Amen. No one is as 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 holy as Yahweh, because there is none to compare with you. No rock like our God. Amen. God's the solid rock. Amen. That will build that house. Amen. And He's our protector, and God is 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 saying that he brings joy through his salvation, amen, that he restore, restores us. God is a restoration God. He restorates us. He restores us. He brings us salvation, which tags with joy. He, we need to delight in the ways of the Lord. It's him being our protector that has a lot of perks that never end, amen. God's got many perks that never end. Let's go to Psalms, to Helam, chapter 23, verse 1 through 6. 1 through 6 of 23 of Psalms. Let's head over there now. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yahweh is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He, he lies me down in green pastures. He leads me in quiet waters. He restores my inner person, which is our spirit. Amen. He guides me in his right path for his, the sake of his own name. Amen. Even if I pass through dark Death ravens, ravines, I will fear no d disaster, for you are with me, your rod and your staff rescue me. Just like when the shepherd has its rod and staff, and, he, and he, a bear comes, a wolf comes, or a wild animal comes to try to get the sheep, and uh, he'll take the staff right over where it's creeping up on the sheep and whack it scared away and even if he has to stand in the gap for his sheep the shepherd he will do it amen that's that's the way god is with us amen you prepare a table for me even as my enemies watch you anoint my head with oil from overflows a cup Goodness and grace will pursue me every day of my life. It doesn't say some days and other days it won't. No, it says every day of my life. 
I will well live in the house of God for years and years to come. Amen. So God's got a plan. He's our holy protector. God Almighty is. Let's continue by going to Psalms to heal him 12, 1 through 8. I mean, 100 and 121, I'm sorry, 121 of 1 through 8. 1 through 8 of 121 of Psalms. Amen. Let's head over there now. Okay. Here we go. If I raise my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from Yahweh, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. Because we're walking in the footsteps of the Messiah, right? And and your, your guidance is not asleep. No, your guidance of Israel. It's not talking about nations. It's talking about the 12 tribes. That, and also it goes into with everything of the seed of Abraham when it comes down to it. Nevertheless, Slumbers nor sleeps. Amen. And Yahweh is your guidance, guidance at your right hand. Yahweh will provide you with shade. The sun cannot strike you during the day or even the moon of the light. Yahweh will guide you against all harm. He will guide your life. Yahweh will guard you. You're coming and going. And now and forever. Amen. That's pretty powerful. God is wanting to be daddy. Are you going to let him be daddy? Are you going to let him seek you out every day? Are you going to let him show you greatness as you look in that mirror to comb your hair every day? Are you going to say, God has called me to winner. I'm going to start winning today. Amen. God says you're a winner. Are you going to win? Are you going to be that winner that God has always said you already are? Amen. He sees it in you. He's cultivating out of us as him being the holy protector. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 91, 1 through 16. 1 through 16 and 91 of Psalms. Let's have and let's go there. Amen. All right. And it says, You who live in the shelter of Elohim, which is the Most High, who spread your might nights in the shadow of Shaddai. So in the morning, he wants to be the Most High, but at night, he wants to be the one that provides for us. Amen. Shaddai. Who will say, Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust? He will rescue you from the trap of the hunter and from the plagues of the calamity. He will cover you with his pentalance and under his wings you will find refuge. His truth and his, is his shield and protection. You will not fear the terror by night nor the arrows flying by day or the plagues roaming by the dark are scorching our week, uh, weeks of he havoc on the noon. Thousands may fall at your side, ten thousands at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Only keep your eyes open, and you will see how the wicked are punished by God. Amen. And for my, for, for you have made yet. Yeah, Yahweh, the Most High, your re your refuge, your dwelling place. No disasters will happen to you. Why? Because we made God our Most High, Amen, and our Shaddai at night, Amen. No disasters will happen to you. No calamity will come near your tents, for He will order His messengers to care for <laughs> excuse me, care for you. Excuse me. And guard you whenever you go. And they will carry you in their hands. That you will not trip on a stone. You will not tread 
you tread down lions and snakes. You have lions, serpents will trample under your feet. Amen. Because he loves me, I will rescue him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. So we got we got to love God with all our heart. We got to know God's name. Amen. He rescues and protects us. Amen. And him, when it's God, it means the Messiah and the Word of God. Amen. And he will call on me. And I will answer the Messiah. I will answer the Word of God. You know, answer the questions that the Word has for us about where we are. You know, what we need to be doing. Amen. And he will call on me and I will answer the Messiah, the Word of God. And I will be with the Messiah, the Word of God, when he and when when he is in trouble, and I will uh, exec, uh, execute him and bring him honor. And I will uh, satisfy him with long life, him or her, and show him or her my salvation. Yeah, amen. The Messiah's salvation that he's always had because he's always been the Messiah. He didn't start when he came to earth. He was always that Messiah, God, okay? He's always been the anointed one, the burning yoke destroying power of God. He's always been that. But he revealed himself so that we could all see him as he really, as he really is, amen? But note that that's only a little portion how great he really is in comparison when we get when we see him face to face as he ultimately really is all the way amen let's go to isaiah yeshiahu delivering god uh 51 12 through 16 12 through 16 of 51 of isaiah let's head over there now amen Okay. And it says, I, I, yes. I am the one who can comfort you. Why are you afraid of man and woman who must die? A human being who will weather like grass. You have forgotten Yahweh, your maker, who stretches out the heavens. Lays the foundation of the earth. Instead, you are a constantly fear of all day because of the oppressor rages. As he prepares to destroy. But where is the oppressor raging? The captivity will soon be set up. And he will not die and go to Shiloh. On the contrary, his food supply will be sustained secure it's talking about the righteous here for i am yahweh your god who steers up the sea makes up waves of roar yahweh tzad is my name tzad means the, the heavenly armies of heaven he's showing his muscle his god that he is the daddy he's a man he's a man god he he takes care of us amen And covers you with the shadow of his hands, orders the the plant the plants in the sky anew, lays the foundations of the earth anew, and says to, to Zion, You are my people. Amen. He's, he's talking about his people, his the born again or to Zion that came out of Israel. Still part of Israel, but they came out and they, they were to Zion, the born again. Okay, let's go to Psalms 101, one, verse 1 through 6, 1 through 6 of 1 of Psalms to Helam. Okay, are we there? How blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked, or what I'd like to say, and the Lord would like to say these days about this. How blessed are those who reject the advice of the politicians, Hollywood, the corporate news media, and don't stand on the on the waves of sinful ways that the news media, the politicians, and Hollywood does, or sit at the scoffers of the politicians, 
Hollywood or the or the news media and delight in their ways in God's Torah. On the Torah they meditate day and night on the good teachings of God. And they are like trees planted by the stream, trees representing strength that they're nurtured to. And they bear fruit in their season. Their leaves never wither. Everything they do succeeds. Not so the wicked, not so the wicked politician, the wicked hallway, the wicked uh, corporate news media, the wicked people. No, who are like chaff driven by the wind. For the reason the, the wicked won't stand up to God's judgment, nor will the sinners. At the gathering of the righteous, at the gathering of the righteous. For Yahweh watches over the ways of the righteous. But the ways of the wicked are doomed. D-O-O-M-E-D. -O -O -E doomed. Amen. The doom might not be today, but it might be tomorrow. Surely we'll be coming around the corner. Because judgment is coming to all you politicians. Judgment is coming to the wicked of Hallway. Judgment is coming to wicked corporate news media, wicked corporations to steal money from the workers or money from the stores or, or they, they price gouge everything too high. Judgment's coming. Mark my words. Revival and protection is coming to the righteous, his little flock. Now there's a lot of lukewarm, and you better straighten your acts up because you're going to be left. You're going to be left to be judged with the wicked. Because you know what? Revelation says of, of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Yes, indeed. That will be fulfilled very soon. So I behoove all the lukewarm pastors, lukewarm rabbis, lukewarm people in the churches and synagogues and holy temples, get right with the Lord. Because the day's coming where that's going to happen. Let's go to Psalms, to Helam 46, 1 through 11. 1 through 11. I have 46 of Psalms. Are we getting there? Okay. And it says, God is our refuge, our strength, and every present help in trouble. Therefore, we are unafraid, even if the earth gives away, even if the mountains tremble, even if the depths of the sea, even if the waters rage and foam, the mountains shake and tremble. There is a river whose stream gladly the city of God, the holy habitations of Elohim, I mean, Elion, I mean, the Most High, God is in the city. It will not be moved. When the daybreak comes, God will help it. Nations will trim, trim, tremble. Kingdoms will be removed. His voice of thunder of forth, and the earth melt away. Yahweh Tazar is with us, our fortress, our God of Jacob. Come and see the works of Yahweh, the astounding deeds he has done on the earth, to the ends of the earth. He makes war cease, war cease, amen, not make war. War is ceasing. That's what God does. He doesn't like war. So stop lying to your congregations, you lukewarm ministers, lukewarm synagogue teachers do you not know that God loves to cease the wars cease the false peace cease the violence violence you know standing up for yourself is not violence I'm talking you know literally hurt people and with 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 their hands or with their tools that are not right and are are hurt people's stuff. That's not right. God's against that. He says, war cease. Like, he's, like he says, storm cease. He's saying, right now, 
war cease. No more war. No more. No more bloodshed. No more blood in their hands, human beings. No more. Cease. War cease. These evil elites love war because they get money. It's all about money to them. They don't care how many people they kill and how many nations get hurt by them. War cease in the name of the Lord. That's what we need to be saying. War cease in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. False peace, feet stop in the name of the Lord. Real peace of God come forth. Amen. Violence cease in the name of the Lord. Amen. To the ends of the earth, he makes wars cease. Assist, stop. He breaks the ball, snaps the spears. If he can break balls, snap spears, he can break tanks. He can, he can make the, all their weapons of warfare not work. Burns in the shield of, in fire, desolates. Learn that I am God, the supreme over the nations, supreme over the earth. Yahweh Tazad is with us. Our fortress is... The God of Jacob. He wants to remind he's the God of Jacob. There's a reason why it says it that way. Because that's where everything started. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Jacob would, would sprouted the 12 tribes of Israel. And you can go back to Abraham. Abraham, where where he, he made us all, pretty much. First it was Adam and Eve. And then it was the three sons of Noah. And then it was Abraham. And then, and in a lot of cases, you got Ishmael and uh, Jacob. The one we come from, one of, and you know what? There's a stigmatism on both things, and there shouldn't be because once they come back to the Lord, all of us, all on the earth, and we're either from one group or the other, we're either from Ishmael or from Jacob, and God loves them both. He sure did. He loved, ja he loved Jacob, but he also liked Ishmael. And it's, it's not his fault they decided to go with the, with the, with the, devils, the devil of hell that uh, they're serving through Islam, through the Catholic Church making it. They did, indeed. It's all on record. Just like the Sabbath day is on Saturday, and they changed it, and that's also on record that the Catholic Church did that. So basically, we need to understand we're all from that seed of Abraham. He, he wasn't just talking spiritually like the modern churches talk about and not even talk about it anymore in, in the synagogues. When both of you and the holy temples that of the uh, holy uh, uh, ministers uh, that minister to other Arabs that are saved, by Jesus, Yeshua, um, you know, and the indigenous uh, uh, camps that talk about the Lord, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We need to understand that that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, eh? in the words of our testimony. That God wants to protect us. We're precious in God's sight, and we're all from Abraham one way or another. You can deny it all you want. But that's not going to change that deep um, thing that's within you, that heritage that you have. You know, instead you should embrace your heritage of being the seed of Abraham, everybody on the earth, because that's the new thing he did. He really did a new thing. Nobody looks at it. We're all from the seed of Abraham, not just spiritually, but naturally. And because that natural part it's just as important as getting that spiritual part right of being of abraham as well because the identity needs to be correct both parts both natural and spiritually and then both of them um take care of that that emotional standpoint we need that that uh and also the the mindful part the emotional mindful part of there is our soul you know and the the will and emotions, amen. Praise the Lord. So let us go on to the last scripture now, and that's going to be First Peter, Aleph, Kepha, 
chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. 3 through 7 of 1 of verse Peter. Amen. Verse Aleph Kepha in Hebrew. All right, are we there? I hope so. I'm going to read. Praise by God. He prays. Praise be God. Father of our Yahweh Yeshua the Messiah, who is keeping with his great mercy. It's just not mercy, God. He got great mercy. Let's get a hold of that, some of that great mercy, shall we? He says, God, are you going to deny what you can have, rightfully have? Okay, are you going to shy away when God's saying he's got great mercy? Okay, are you going to get a hold of it? I mean, seriously. If you need it, he's God. Okay, God's God, okay? Has caused us through the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah from the dead to be born again to a living hope. It's not just a hope. It's a living hope. It's a hope that's alive. It's like when you see a bird down the street, that bird's alive, right? This is what it's saying. It's a living, living organism of hope that we have. Okay? It's alive. And it's, it's, it brings us to a better place. Yes. Just grab a hold of that hope that God's saying. That mercy and that hope, you got to grab it. God wants to give it. What are we gonna do? We're gonna get. We're gonna get it, right? We're gonna say yes. We, we're gonna take that that living hope. We're gonna take that great mercy of yours. You're gonna give it to us. We're gonna take it. We're not gonna let it go down to the concrete and waste away. And God, God's gonna be shaking his head and say, "Boy, those boys and girls are they ever gonna learn? They got all this good stuff. And they won't give. They won't take it. You know, it's like it's like." Giving your son and daughter a candy and they don't take it. It's like, and they play, they play bad on you. How's that going to make you feel, dads and moms? Yeah, well, that's the way God feels. He's got, he's got a bunch of stuff for us. We don't accept it. To the inheritance that cannot decay. That means it goes on and on and on. It's fresh every morning. Amen. The inheritance that cannot decay, spoil, or fade away. Keep safe from you in heaven. Meanwhile, through trusting, you are being protected by God. It's through trusting we are protected by God. It's, it's being in a trust, you know, but also trusting. It goes both ways. Are protected by God's power for deliverance, ready to be Revealed in the last days. Hello, last days. We're here now. Okay, I'm not kidding. Last days. This is it. We're the last day generation. Let's get going and just take all the inheritance and all the all the uh, all the people that did great things of the past. You know, for and and the legacies of the past, the word of God and the legacies that um, that are a lot that are out out there from the past. We are the final generation, okay? What are we doing? We, if, if they did what they did, we should do double that. We should, because we're the last end time generation. The end and the beginning come together, amen, for greatness. Greatness, greatness, excellence, this be the excellent generation. It's renamed that when the world says you're uh, a baby born or the world says you're Generation X or Millennial or Y, it says, no, I'm not. I'm the, I'm the excellent generation. I don't care what age you are on this. This is what the church is. This is what the synagogue is. This is what the Holy Arabic temples that are celebrating Jesus every day in there, Yeshua. We are the excellent generation. Amen. We're the Royal priests, holy, holy nations, amen, for the Lord. Rejoice in this, even through, for a little while, you have uh, uh, experienced grief and varicose trials. Even gold is tested for generosity by the fire. That's what's happening. The purpose of those trials is so that the, the trusting generosities, which is far viable and perishable goal will be judged worthy of praise glory and honor at the revealing of Yeshua the Messiah did you hear 
this, that you really hear the very word that that as we're tested at the end times that we are right now, that that is going to that is where it's going to usher in the Lord, because when there's great trust, great tribulations like there is now, that is the that is the final thing that has to happen. Before the Lord comes back, literally, is that there, there's there's trials and temptations because God, God's testing our our loyalties with Him. Are we really loyal? Are if if, if things go all weird around you, are you going to stay with God? Are you going to stay with God? Huh? Are you going to stay with God even when other people in your family are falling away? Are you going to stay with the Lord? Are you going to stay with him? Matter what, are you going to be that tree that's strong, that, that stays put, that stays put in the nourishment of his holiness, of the great mercies that he has, the living hope that we need to grab a hold of? A living hope, not just hope, it's alive, a living hope. It's going, it's going. And it's going to get you a touchdown, a home run, a going, and we're going to win the game. Amen. God wants us to win, win, win. Not lose, lose, lose like the church has done, like the synagogue has done, like the holy temples have done. We need to win, win, win. Like the holy the holy lodges that the you, in Native America, you, you got to get the winning attitude. Get the winning attitude. Get the winning attitude. Go on. Get deep. Hit it hard and do it good for God. Amen. Get the hold of that living hope. That sounds so good, doesn't it? Living hope. That's what it is. A living hope. Great mercy. Restoration. Restoration. Great mercy. Living hope. Revival. A revi with judgment for the wicked. Amen. So let's understand he is our holy protector. I mean, I, I, that should tickle your insides out. Holy protector. God is. He's never changed. He's never changed his ways when it comes to his own kids that are saved. He's always going to be holy protector, and he will always well be. But we're going to grab a hold of things when he says, this is for us. When he says, I've got some hope for you, living hope. What, what are you going to do? You're going to turn them down? Just like a kid turns down a piece of candy, how ridiculous is that? The, the kid is going to grab that candy, going to grab it with everything in him. What are we going to do? Are we going to be like the little kid and grab a hold of all this beautiful stuff that God's got for us? Or are we going to get too big for our britches and say, all oh, that candy is this like candy. No, that came from your dad. That came from your mom. You better accept it because it's got some love in that candy. You know what I'm saying? The same thing for, for God's giftings. He's got a lot of love in that for us. We're going to take a hold of those, all those wonderful things. And you're going to understand he's a holy protector. He's not just a protector. He's a holy protector. He's the sovereign protector. He's He's got it all together for his kids. Amen. Just like you dads and your moms, you try to get it all together for your kids until they get teenagers and they say, what happened? But the God of grace is going to be with you in those teenage years. And, he, and, and that, those kids are going to turn out great because you're winners. You're not losers. So you got to be winning on the side of winning on parentry. And, and God's going to help you through his word and through uh, uh, encouragement of others. Amen. You're going to get it. You're going to get them. You're going to, and they're going to become, they're going to become literally spiritual uh, warriors and, and, and princesses. And they're going to do great things. Amen. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. We got to, we got to have that, that no one, that God is the holy protector, and He's got a lot of gifts with that, and we got to grab a hold of it. We got to grab a hold of it with a passion and say, "Whoa, I want that piece of spiritual candy of your living hope, your great mercy, your protection, your your revival, whatever God's got." We're gonna grab it. We're gonna say yes. We're we're, we're grateful. We're grateful. You get all the glory as as these things 
transpire. Amen. And, and everything's going to grow down the street as we walk in the footsteps of the Messiah, all the giftings of every step. And we're going to say, well, isn't the Lord good? Amen. We're going to get the men are going to give high fives. The women are going to say, give the thumbs up and the smile. And we're all going to go down the road as a holy family, as God being a holy protector, our daddy. And we're going to do, we're going to win, win, win. We're going to win every game. We're going to win every moment in our jobs and in our shoppings, whatever it is. We're going to find the combination to make everything go down very in harmony and in, in, in decency and goodness. Amen. Of God. Amen. So this, this give a, a hand clap for our creator God. Amen. Praise you, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, our creator God. Amen, our Yahweh. Now I'm going to ask those of you, there's a lot of you that need to give their hearts and their minds and, and, and get a new spirit in them. Um, a dead spirit becoming a living spirit through the Holy Spirit going upon it, hovering on it, and, and, and peace of the Holy Spirit goes in that spirit that was dead and becomes a living spirit. Amen. So are you ready to get saved? I know you are, Arabs. I know you're falling uh, down Christians. I know you're falling down Jews. It's time for the greatness of God. Amen. Native Americans, get, get the powwow going on for God. And this and this just hit those drums and and really rip it and say the youth is coming back. The youth is coming back to the Lord, and they're and they're going to they're going to be strong and mighty and courageous. Amen. Are you ready to get saved? Are you ready, Islanders, to get saved? Are you ready, Landers, to get saved? Are you ready, Mountaineers, to get saved? Are you ready, people in outer space and the space stations, to get saved? Are you ready, people in the sea? You know, all the uh, the things in the sea where they check out the the oceans of stuff. Are you ready to get saved everywhere you are? Our God is no specter person. He He loves you all, and He He likes a variety of different things. Okay, so just stop fighting, bickering, and just say these differences make us what we are. Now let's come together, and and let's get all saved and get right with God and grab a hold of all the good giftings and know He's our protector and He's gonna whack. Whack the, the devils of hell senseless for us. Amen. So pray this prayer and be saved. Thank you. Thank you. Dear dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior in my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to family of God. I love you. Maybe you never heard anybody say, I love you. I love you. God, more importantly, loves you. And that's why he paid a price that you, on, on the cross and living as the second Adam perfectly for you, for me, for all of us. And congratulations, my little sister and my little brother. Welcome to family. God, now you can start winning. Okay, there's always a day when you feel defeated, okay? There's always a day when these emotions creep up on us the wrong way. But you know what? That doesn't give us the right to stop feeling we're winners, okay? It doesn't give the right for us to stop grabbing a hold of God's goodness. It doesn't give us the right to, to, to not get our praise on. That's when you need to get the praise on the most. When you're when you're feeling a little off that day, you need to get the praise on. You turn that music on. Put those earphones on. Turn those music up and and, and get the beats going for God and in your mind and and saying, Hey, I'm I'm not going to be defeated today. I, it's it's a hard play, but we're going to win at the end. We're just going to have the the last plays big at the end. And that's what's going on right now, O church, O synagogue. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The, the, the last plays are coming in. We're going to hit them hard, hit them low, and we're going to win that game. And the rest of the, the, the enemy camp is going to be, mouth's going to be open, saying, how in the world did they do that? It's because we found our inner strength and in what God calls that we are. Amen. And we're going to go out there. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Praise God. The, the end of the game is the most important part of it. So get a winning attitude going. Even though you got you lost the first two quarters, there's always one more. There's always two more. Let's get them. Let's do it. Let's do. Let's get our second spiritual breath in us. 
and do it. Because we can do all things through the Lord God strengthening us. We got to encourage. We got we got to do it. We got to get that great mercy and living hope on us all the time and saying thank you Lord for that living hope even though we probably never understand how deep that really is and maj majestic that really is and how great really your mercy is I mean I mean how great is great you know there's no ending to that amen with God God is great and his mercies endure forever amen so that means they've endured forever and they're great. That's great, you know? That is that's super. That is super beyond reckoning. So let's take a hold of God's great mercy, loving hope, and know he's our protector and he's got our back. He's our coach and he's going to hit hard on us because he knows we, we're capable to be an arsenal for him. Each one of us are a holy arsenal. And we will win the game. We are going to win. We're not going to lose. So stop putting that losing mentality, O churches and synagogues, holy temples, holy uh, uh, shrines. Uh, the, the, come on. This go for the go. Native Americans, this, it's time to get some more revival going on. It's time for the Arabs, the Jews, the Christians, the Native Americans. All the people, Islanders, all everybody, let's get some revival going. Let's be on the winning team. Let's don't be on the losing team that gets judged by God, okay? Those that are wicked are going to be judged. Those that do bad things, I mean real bad things, intentionally, not unintentionally like most people will do. There's a difference. God knows when you intentionally do something, or unintentionally do this, or you're... You're forced in a way from these satellites changing the way you're thinking. This is why it says renew your mind because God knows the technology that they were going to make. I mean, they literally have technology that can um, change your beta waves of your mind, your alpha waves, all kinds of different things. And this is why God's word says capture every thought. There's a reason. I mean, it's not talking just maybe something we might have thought on accidentally. No, this is purposely forced on you for the news media, through through all these different channels, the hallway. You, you got to capture every thought. You got to have that winning attitude. When 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 the news media starts putting you down, church, what are you going to do? You're going to believe that? Are you going to believe the re bad report? Are you going to believe the good report that God says you? It says your synagogue, holy temple, holy shrines where the Indians come together and, and they praise Yahweh, God, with all their heart and our islanders hope. All these things, man, I'm telling you what, we're, we are winners and not losers. The devil's a loser and he's going to lose real good as we start winning. So let's start raising our, our ups up and not down. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Let's end with a shalom prayer. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness that brings peace to pass his own understanding be with you. Not in seven, none in broken, complete peace of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord see you through the other side. See, there one side we're going through, but there's another side. And guess who's in the finish line? ready with his arms open it's at Yeshua Jesus. He's got a big arms enough to hug us all and keep hugging some more across this whole universe. Come on now. And he's got his arms open saying, come on, family, finish the race. You're almost there. You just got to stretch left. Are you going to quit? Are you going to be going to quit? Are you going to keep running this race? This, to the end. We're almost at the finish line. What are you going to do? Are you going to stop and and hurt God's heart? He's got his arms open. He's ready to hug us a big one and say, you did it, you did it, and did it. And we're all going to be crying. Even though, even the guys that don't like crying, we're all going to be crying. I mean, tears of joy and say, wow, we, we can't believe it. And, and how a support of God you've been to us. I mean, you're at the end. We see it. You're coming back. We see it. We're coming back. We see it. 
the world will see, and I, the world will be in trouble by then, and they see God as he really is. But meanwhile, he's got his arms ready to go. Give us a big hug, a big pat on the backs, and say, you did it. You won the race. You did it for the least of these. You did it for me, oh, amen. God is a very supportive coach, believe me. And, and with that is the daddy that comes out, that sternness. No, don't do that. Todd, don't do that, Susie. No, you can't go over there. If you go over there, you're going to have a problem. The popes of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes your brother and sister, that's all that are coming by spiritually and saying, hey, you know, God is a, a family-oriented God. And so we got to start saying, yeah, we're all brothers and sisters in his sight. You know, like that old Sunday school song, you know, all precious in his sight, red, yellow, blue, uh, perfect, perfectly dotted, all the colors, you know, we're all in his sight, precious. We all come together at the end of the day, realizing the uniqueness we got to have. Why? Because it adds flavor and understanding to all each other. It makes it more exciting, like, because you, you learn something new. Oh, I learned something new with that brother or that sister over there. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? We need to start calling everybody brothers and sisters. If, we, if We're going to have to learn it now because if we don't learn it now, we're going to learn it in heaven. The place is coming to earth. You might as well learn it now. You might as well just start calling everybody brother and sister. So, so you know what I'm saying? It's time to be a family. It's time to bring the people and rule them back to the Lord. Amen. There's a lot of people that, are, that used to be saved that are not. we got to get them back. We gotta get them back. We gotta get the sheep back. You gotta care enough. You got you gotta you you gotta be torn up inside like he was on the cross and realize that's what he did, and that's what we gotta go. We gotta get them back. We gotta get the sheep back in the fold. Amen. We gotta tell the world you don't need to be a goat, you can be a sheep. A shepherd that's gonna love you every day and never stop. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. Just keep the faith. Just keep it up. Just do it. For the Lord God, Jesus, Yeshua, our Yahweh. Amen. God bless you. Lord, I keep you. Shalom.